have an interview, like a job interview kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's just us having a discussion about, you know, casual things. And I just want to go. And I like how you're looking actually today. Kind of cool, simple. It stays like that. <laughs> stay. We are all set. And please do come in and take a seat right here. Of course, ladies first. Everybody and welcome to the Tandy Jacobs Born to Differ show. My name is Tandy Jacobs and I'm joined here today by Ashley Kupaza. Ashley, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Tandy. Thank you. It's always an honour. Um, how have you been, especially through this season of COVID-19? Um, yeah, um, to be honest, I've been really good. I can't complain. Um, obviously, it's not an ideal situation for anyone, but we thank God for uh, just good health. Just thank God for being alive. And um, yeah, it so is, definitely. It is by the grace. It is by the grace. By his graces. By his death. So, um, Ashley, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Ashley? If people are to um, wonder why do I have this guest here, what is it about you? Who is Ashley? What is behind all this? You know, and you're about 25, 26, am I right? <laughs> No, I'm a little bit older than that. You're a little bit older than that. I'm actually 28 right 28? now. Yes, I'm 28. I know. Don't look yeah, okay. I still get ID to buy matchsticks. So. <laughs> wow. So who is Ashley? Tell us. So that's a, that's a, that's a good question. So depending on who you're asking, Ashley is a is a different thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I wear different hats for different people. Um, okay. So Ashley is a father. He's an entrepreneur. He's a business owner. He's a recruiter, he's a singer, dancer, he's, wow. he's, a, he's, a, he's a musician. Are you married? Am I married? Single? I'm unmarried. I'm not married. Okay. I'm not single either. Okay, so you are not available? I would like to say I'm not available, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm it's definitely not available. <laughs> it's good to know, it's good to know you have that out there. Yeah, no, you just um. have to be. <laughs> Because I think I'll come back home and things won't be and okay. And will not be the same. Somebody will be watching. <laughs> I like that. So you said you're a father of one, two? One daughter. You've got one, one daughter. daughter. Oh, one daughter. How old is she? She's four. She four turned four uh, on the 13th. Uh, yeah, so not too long ago. Oh, wow. That's lovely. You were blessed with me. And um, you said you were into dancing. Now, I need to say this. I need to say this. That I know actually is very good at a particular dance well known in Zimbabwe called Boroda. And um we were once at a show. Yes. Uh that was twenty eighteen, December yes, twenty eighteen. Yes, 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 yes. And you were playing there and then they <laughs> there was there was um Matthias Merira, uh, Tembelani, yeah. who was the other guy? Take sure, take, take sure, sure, take sure. Take sure. The three of them, really good. And some one of them asked Let's come, people who can dance, and a lot of people came on stage. But I knew, and if Ashley stands up, <laughs> he is gonna get everybody on the floor because you are good at it. How did you get to learn that dance? <laughs> yeah, so, um, funny thing about that show is I didn't even want to dance first of all. Okay. So I did like I was tired because we had been rehearsing the whole night and everything like that. But it's in your blood. So, but the thing is, like adrenaline gets me going, exactly. and the music, it did. and then like and you know I can. Do this. And the whole band was just kind of looking at me like, "Don't worry, we'll cover it. You just go in front. You just dance, do your thing." So yeah, I ended up. So the Bordeaux thing, uh, I grew up listening to a lot of like my chess so then there are some water type of music. So obviously, as you know, that music traditionally comes with a form of dancing, and um, Bordeaux was one of the the dances that I went into the mirror and I'd be like, you know, you know, singing. There's something that your father liked, maybe, and you took him, <sighs> him at times. I don't want to lie. My dad cannot dance. <laughs> my dad cannot dance. Oh my goodness! If he watches this, he's yeah, my dad, dad is literally got this one move when, like, yeah, every church conference, every party, literally, you know, that's it. But that's no, it. no one. The funny thing is, like, no one in my family really can dance. Really? Nobody. Nobody. Got, I think my younger. You, you, you got two other siblings. Yes, you? yes. Like, and you're the first boy. Yes, because I'm my the middle brother. He, he's not a dancer. The youngest one. He's a dancer, yeah. He is definitely. We, I think yeah. if anyone like, uh, yeah, it's him. Israel is definitely the dancer yeah, in the family. So yeah, just after me though. Takes after you. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's really nice. No, it's good to hear that you've got quite a lot of things. And 
from a young age you started dancing from a young age you started playing the instruments from a young age you started singing Sing, yeah and singing mainly was in church so yeah um to be honest up until only recently singing was always in church playing was always in church okay and yeah. this is mainly because both your parents are pastors yeah so pastors. so my, my mom and dad are pastors uh, of a ministry called new beginnings in christ okay so oh, where is that based uh, so we're based in slough but um we're, we're sort of like in an international church okay. so they've got a massive branch holes in zimbabwe also so growing up um growing up in church all i knew was basically church do you understand as a pastor's kid church doesn't finish on sunday it's monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday because people are always coming to your house when they're not invited mm -hmm. so um church was always at home and uh so playing singing just came naturally like i didn't really have a choice growing up like but obviously the love of music grew grew with me mean, but mean. yeah um my dad was a musician mm -hmm. and uh the whole was family uh, well, he, he doesn't like being called a musician anymore because he doesn't really like playing and he all that like stuff. He doesn't. He's like, uh, he just kind of like handed the button to, to you guys. Oh. I want to be able to, because... Um, Especially since you're all boys. As yeah, well. and we're very competitive when we're all musicians. Of talents. <laughs> yeah. So it's not even just him. It's like his whole family lineage for my grandmother. Like my grandmother was like probably the best musician in our family. And then my uncles, uh, my aunties all sing and play. And it's just like, yeah, it's a family thing. So it was passed on from one generation to the yes, other. Yes, yes, yes. Indeed, you were blessed. Yeah. Wow, I wish there was something like that in my family. That <laughs> anyway, we're going to be coming back to the second segment and we're going to be talking to Ashley and finding out what Barua is all about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One Click Supplies is offering an easy grocery and supplies online shopping website for Zimbabweans in the diaspora. One Click Supplies makes supporting your families easy, putting a smile on their faces. Welcome back to the Tandy Jacobs Born to Differ show. I'm here with Ashley and Ashley's going to be telling us about how Barua Solutions got birthed. What exactly is the story behind that? so like, that's probably uh, a lot of people have asked me that question like how is barua born and like just, what does it even mm. mean so why barua because a lot of people uh suggested different names to me do you understand um but when i sat down with my dad and um i said dad i want to start a business you know and um but i just don't want it to be limited to music and i just don't want it to be limited to this i just want it to be limited to that did you always have a business mindset within you I think I ever since I could remember, I've always had like an entrepreneurship like mentality within me. Okay. Like at school, I remember like I would go to the to the shop in the morning, mm. and buy the cans for like uh, the pack of uh, K, like K cans. I think them times they were still like thirty p, and uh, I'd buy a bunch of them and then put them in my bag and then go sell them for fifty sixty p at school. Oh. Okay. So I'm thinking like, yes. You were a hustler at a young age. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Okay, Very much so. Okay. So yeah, I knew I always had something for basically just... Uh, just Generating staying, income. I, I, guess, I guess, yeah. I just Nine to five was not something that always motivated me. Cause, mm. Yeah. Especially for a young age. Okay, so you had this business idea mm -hmm. from a young age. Mm -hmm. So, but Baruva, you spoke to your dad. And then what did he say? Okay, so essentially, um, how Barua started, Barua did not start uh, when Barua started, basically. Barua had been going for a couple of years before that, but just unbranded, if that makes sense. Okay. So, um, at some point in time, I had been playing in different churches, playing in different concerts and stuff like that. And I turned around and said, you know what, like, um, for the longest period, I've always played but uh, something that I've always realized is that there's like um, the demand is increasing, you understand? Mm -hmm. And myself, I couldn't basically be everywhere where I was needed. Mm -hmm. So I said, it's basically soliciting my friends and just basically turn around and said, yo, can you please basically help me out there and cover that gig for me? Can you play there? Can you play there, play there, play there, play there, play. But it was quite stressful to manage all of that. So then I then turned around and said, you know what? Instead of just going through all of this stress and not making, basically making, generating an income, why don't I basically just turn around and say to people, I run a business and uh, I can provide you musicians mm -hmm. and basically then go and find the musicians to to fit to fit so whatever. To fit into exactly. So. So, like you said, you want to make this into a business mm -hmm. and initially was this only within the church 
churches around so in perfect the yeah yeah it started off as just a church thing mm -hmm. so i was just playing music in church music in conferences music and gospel concerts and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then kind of just started branching out uh, as we're branching out and then uh, a couple of years then people we were we were getting like uh, i guess a little bit more popular mm -hmm. but then people were like but what, what are you guys called like why are you like okay. and what is your name? And What's like, I, I guess my answer to it, like, to, to all that was like, uh, we're the band. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're the band. Yeah, we're coming with my guitar, that kind of thing. Like the guitar boys, something like that. So yeah, the guitar boys. Yeah, okay, that, I, okay. I could go. I could go with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could roll with that. Okay, so you started doing that, and then you, is it at that stage that you decided to start charging people in the ministries and stuff like that, or were you just doing it for charity? or because it's church so uh i think when i started for the longest period i always played for free because like i was like i'm playing in church so first of all when i was playing in my father's church like uh i never charged and still oh, I, I still don't you I still don't. To charge your father no no so when i was playing in my father's what is so, do you know what people i i know it sounds really funny but like i i always mention that because there's actually people that get paid to play in their parents churches and i've come across it so many times so that's why people are like are these people sons sons and daughters really? like yeah like so if my son mm -hmm. comes on to like this show mm -hmm. and he's helping me to set up i have to pay him okay at Le least i'm adding him Eesh, that's a baby look boy. at it this from i'm this an african parish you know you, 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 you <laughs> have a very very valid point but look at it this from this perspective mm -hmm. let's say you're running a business right and your son is the director of that business are you saying your son is okay, basically no, going to work different. for free yeah does that yeah. make sense so especially that, if it's this is what he's exactly so this is what actually was doing so that you know when other people were going for side jobs on the weekends and stuff like that mm -hmm. i'll be spending my time investing into my craft and basically playing music in different other places so i didn't always try when I started off and um, initially I realized okay it's becoming a bit costly to manage this this hobby and yeah. stuff like that and I realized I could actually uh, monetize it because I'm spending a lot because some of the key, some of the gears that we have are like I'll just give you an example I spent three thousand pound on the keyboard and that uh, wow. yeah, people would be thinking so when you go you go with your own yes keyboard. so that's the thing and um, I thought you know what let me sort of like uh, be uh, sort of like compensated for the time that I'm I guess I guess I'm spending so this is so what challenge did you face especially now that you are you were young mm -hmm. a young black uh boy mm -hmm. who is in christian yeah, yeah of course and um has father is a pastor who's well known mm -hmm. and then now is coming to a church who is connected to his father mm -hmm. and wants to charge the dad's friend and as much as they're both pastors you know but i'm coming here what challenges did you face that was there any resistance were people not you know willing were they giving you a love offering <laughs> you know so um uh that's... they feel that you have crossed the line I'll, as in it's not christian like i'll be vehemently honest like um it was a huge challenge like there's a huge stigma stigma in terms of play paying like for some people just don't believe in paying musicians for playing in church they say you know it's supposed to be charity but then i always beg the question it's for god yeah it's, it's <laughs> your word is in heaven that's the your answer that i always give heaven. so um the answer that I, like that i always give people is like you know the carpets that you have in church are not free do you understand uh the music equipment that you have in church is not free yeah uh so why is it when somebody is dedicating like a lot of time yeah. into basically uh, enabling the service to 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 to, to, to flow, to flow yeah. um, why can't we basically make sure that we're there for that person? Because this is the times that people are investing into basically working yes. elsewhere. Because yeah. yeah. I could be going to take a sh to to take a job during the weekend as well and doing what else everyone doing else doing. What you want to do? But no, I'm preparing for for, for the, the service Sunday. for your service exactly. To come on Sunday. So that makes sense. So There's yeah, something that you once posted on Facebook, a clip where you said, "It's funny, I may I can't remember the exact words, mm. but." You said um, Pentecostal churches are prepared to pay for an international gospel artist but not to local come ones. than to pay for the local one to pay. Yeah, it's, it's... It's... And, you know... So this is why I always say... For me, I'm a person that believes in empowerment, you understand? Yeah. For that, for that international artist to become an international artist, somebody had to empower them. Yeah. Do you understand? 
And I feel like we don't do enough as Pentecostals to basically empower our musicians. So that's why we always have, we always feel the need to go out, out there and basically get people to come in. Mm. So um, that's why I definitely thought like, the people that are indoors let's let's reward them essentially for let's what they reward, were doing let's invest in exactly them. exactly and um, when we invest in them they can be able to get bigger and then they can still stay within the ministry Definitely. and if they're dedicated mm -hmm. to the ministry during the whole week this becomes their full-time job yeah and Definitely. they get paid for it definitely wow that's amazing okay we're going to come back shortly after a quick break thank you one Click Supplies is offering an easy grocery and supplies online shopping website for Zimbabweans in the diaspora. One Click Supplies makes supporting your families easy, putting a smile on their faces. And we are back to the Tandy Jacobs show. I'm Tandy Jacobs, Ashley Kupazza. So how exactly was Baruba birthed and what is it? You talked earlier on about mm -hmm. guitar boys, <laughs> but, but okay. what, what exactly is it then? Okay, so I'll come back to how like um, the name Baruba came up. So uh, I was sitting down and basically it came to that point where, the, you know, the pressure was pushing like we need, we need, a, name we need a name because we're going out there selling a service essentially yeah. and um, we need to be able to brand ourselves we need to be able to people need to call us something essentially yeah, they, yeah, yeah. so I sat down with a lot of people my, my peers asking what names and a lot of names came about and mm. they all sounded very cliche mm. and I didn't really identify with them so I sat down with my father basically and my dad is like basically my go-to is my like confidant my role model he's like that guy that I just wow. basically go to my pastor dad everything all in all in one so i sat down with him and was like dad this is my dilemma and he's like okay what, what you're most passionate about right now if i was to ask you what is actually passionate about and at this point in time like i think my daughter was about a month old or two months old and i was like my daughter is the thing that i'm most passionate about and he's like there you have it and then i was like but i like i can't call my company daughter <laughs> so and he's like no but like why can't your 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 business be about your daughter because that's what, like, you know, when people mention this name, it gives you something that you, you know, you identify with. So then I was like, you know, Barua. So then it just came to me and I was like, and then a lot of people were like, but Barua, is that the one? I was like, no, that's the one I'm sticking to. But then in the, in the back of my head, I just, um, the, the the question came up, what what's Barua going to be like? Is it going to be like an artist's name? Is it going to be like, and I was like, solutions, because it's not just one pronged approach it's not just music it's not just um uh, it's sound lighting or whatever you need at the time it's it it's a lot of other things mm. involved so which brings us to the next question that you asked me so what is like what does barua solutions actually do so we have a, sorry you so ruva is your daughter ruva rasha is my daughter ruva rasha is your daughter and what does so, Rovarasha is um, God's uh, flower, flower. Yeah. and actually it's not actually God's flower, I, I believe they said it's a rose of Sharon. Okay. Yeah, so that's actually where Rovarasha comes from. Ah. Yeah, so my auntie had to tell me that that's what it meant actually. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, that's... So Barua Solutions. Yeah, so Barua. It all came from after your daughter. Yes, essentially. Oh, she's blessed. <laughs> I hope when she's grow, when the time she grows up, she's gonna be reaping all this. Do you know what it is? Mm -hmm. That's so. When I started this, this is what I had in mind. Like, I want to create a platform for her that I never really had growing up. I want to make sure that you know when she grows up, she has um, something that's passed on to her the same way my dad passed on, on the music and yeah. everything else. But like, I want something that she can turn around and basically hold that's tangible as well um so yeah hence why the business started and like hence why she was the focal point of She's everything the focal point, that's it. fantastic so solutions barua solutions so what is it really about so uh barua solutions is um is basically i would like to say a group mm -hmm. or an umbrella uh, in the sense that it encompasses very different uh, aspects to it mm -hmm. so we have one prompt approach where we're mu there's music but in the music it's split into two so there's music as in like we play uh we, we provide musicians it's recruitment core music musician recruitment and we provide you for different 
um, events, churches or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not just limited to churches as well. So we even play in circular events as well. And um, we provide sound, lighting, and um, just so that's the other side of the music. So resource as well as um, equipment and uh, events management and quite a view. And that's, you touched on something really very interesting. So I want to ask you this. You are now penetrated into the circular world. Yes. And you're playing in the circular world. Yes. How did your parents feel or the transition? I mean, you're coming from a house where you said church is Monday to Sunday. Yes. Okay. Indeed, 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 indeed. You live and breathe the Bible. <laughs> yes. And your parents, both of them are pastors. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been playing in the churches, many, many ministries that you've been playing, of going course. and playing. And you are known, everybody knows you, that, <laughs> you know, Ashley is the Pastor Kupasa's son. Yeah, yeah. And now you're penetrating into the circular world. Mm -hmm. How was that for your parents? How did they feel about it? As well as how did you feel about it yourself? Um, yeah, so we'll start off with how I felt about it, first of all, and then we'll go into my parents' one. Your parents, yeah. So how I felt about it, I love music, do you understand? I, I love music, and when, one of the things that I first mentioned to you is like, I grew up listening to my chess, so my chess is not a gospel artist, you understand? Okay. So I, I'm a lover of music, first of all. Mm. doesn't matter whether it's rock, country, R&B, gospel, hip-hop, whatever it is, I love music. Mm. And if I identify with the music, that's just it. That's, that's the most it. important thing for me. So for me, I didn't see it being an issue. Okay. I didn't see because uh, I listened. I already listened to circular music already. So what's playing going to make a difference? That's that. That was my thought process. Uh, my parents. I would say from my dad's side. My dad's side. He's like my dad. The first thing that he always says about anything is like, pray about it. Do okay. you understand? Um, if when we pray about it, if you're okay with that go ahead with it my mom at first she was definitely not for it like yeah she was not for it. yeah my mom is like um my mom is very she's very traditional in a sense and like she loves things in in, in, a, in a certain way she's very organized mm -hmm. do you understand so she was like perception is everything you understand you're going to be playing in church and the next thing people are seeing you playing for a circular artist where people are doing whatever they do. exactly and then you've been playing for textua now and, you're going to be playing yes, and then and then she's dancing like dancing brodel there, dancing brodel there. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> and they're like, you can't be dancing for Jesus and dancing in 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 the it does yeah. Not so, mix. so but my dad was like, uh, my dad was very supportive, which made it easier. Like my dad, as as soon as we had because we had conversed about it, mm. and he he just somebody that's just supported what I wanted to do musically, yeah. and uh, he just supported the direction that I wanted to take my music. You understand? So it it made it easier to take whatever the world had to say yeah. about me doing it because mm -hmm. there was a l I would get inboxes in my, in my message call like my son we saw you playing at for Toki vibes is everything okay you understand really so yeah, people come into like, your inbox because you understand I'm a pastor son. and they were thinking maybe you've gone astray yeah, so you are lost you need deliverance <laughs> We need to be, we need to get baptized. I want, oh my goodness. Yeah, one lady turned around and said, I'm praying for you. I'm praying I'm you. I'm praying for you. You need I'm Jesus. Pr I'm, 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 <laughs> pray, I'm praying. I'm praying you come back home. And I was like, I'm still going to church. I, nothing's changed. Do you understand? Like I've, I just love music and I love playing music. And this is just something that I'm passionate about. And I think the fact that you now had, your dad was already on your side. Mm -hmm. Mommy took her a little while, but she came around. At yeah, the yeah, end. yeah. I think dad had a word with mom and then they both came around, <laughs> came around to it um so you now had your strongest support network because you said your dad is your go-to person yes, yes, yes. so you had your you had a strong support from yeah. your parents and their approval and there was nothing else that was gonna hinder or stop you or deter you yeah so ultimately the people that have a, a massive influence in how i feel and how i react and just how my life goes on mm. um, my inner circle my family my parents do you understand and my my siblings obviously so if they turn around and say you know go for it go get the world regardless of what the world thinks about me getting it like i'm gonna go, I'm go, gonna go and get it. so what was your response i'm quite intrigued <laughs> I wanna, no no because i think it's, it's a message you've got you've got a very strong point here and a message that needs to go across yeah when people were sending you these kind of messages in your inbox mm -hmm. and for young we got young um the young generation mm -hmm. who is growing up and they're now 
going to they listen to all these kind of music okay they new dances that are coming up bordo oh. is only known in the zimbabwean circle but the new kind of you know yeah. and the Zanku, Hala, shoki, yeah. shoki, shoki, all these kind of yeah. things that are coming up and parents are scared of course parents are frightened mm -hmm. most especially parents who are who were not born and raised here okay and who came here when they're much older and then they brought their children mm -hmm. so children are growing up in a different culture different environment different society mm -hmm. and they're being exposed to everything of course i mean we've got the internet right at the platform of our hands we haven't got problems to worry about data it's wi-fi is everywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know? <laughs> you go to mcdonald's wi-fi yeah you know? so but you now saying i want to uh i am a christian mm -hmm. my belief i love god but people are now coming to your inbox and saying you have gone astray mm -hmm. what was your response to that or when people were saying you need jesus we're praying for you? i think you mentioned something that was quite key before i even answered that it, the cultural shift that we have moving here is is, is, is it's something that's not easy to, to, to go through you understand so somebody the way people are brought up in Zim is not the way people are being brought up here. Mm -hmm. We have different dynamics. For starters, you mentioned internet. Mm -hmm. Like back in the day, I remember growing up in Zimbabwe, like my, whatever my dad would turn around and say, I would take it as fact or whatever an exactly. adult say. Yeah. But now it's like, well, you go to Google, you my, 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 my little brother who's eight years old, if you say something and he questions it in his head, he goes and Googles it and he mm -hmm. then he pulls you up right there and say, no, actually you're wrong this is what it is mm. and that's considered being rude in our culture you understand it you is. can't you, you, it is very rude so i guess there's different dynamics that we're having to to to, ne to, to negotiate <laughs> with and i guess my parents one thing that i've always loved and supported that that that, that, I, that i've always loved about them is they they found um i guess a, 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 a sort of like um can I say like uh, the way of bridging the two you understand okay. of saying these are morals core morals you mm -hmm. understand but can we not uh, bend around the edges as well mm -hmm. but we these are our core values in terms of like what we cannot change okay. do you understand uh, but that doesn't mean that because we're in the UK we can't do that because we can't do that we can't do that we can't do that so it always made life easier and in terms of like how I responded to the lady yeah I just I was I was very honest and I was like to be honest my parents support me that's okay. the, like I, I, because I thought if I say a long essay and you know it's going to be considered quite rude. Yeah. Do you understand? And I was like. So my parents support me. That's it. Like yeah. I don't need anybody else. You like your approval. Like um, I think um, I think there was one late like one 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 of my friends. He, he was he's an unbeliever, and he somebody said quite uh, I think it was a harsh harsher message in terms of like how they felt about how I was playing in circular mm -hmm. environments. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he turned around and he said, uh, and he said in the show, and he said, which generally means like, you don't eat in their house. So okay. what they say should not have an influence on your life. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Um, so I, I guess from my, from my perspective, I've never really, I've never really been motivated by what the outside world what says outside about world it, says. says about me because essentially if I followed what people said I would I would never be running a business because somebody definitely would disapprove of me doing anything that I wanted to do exactly I think it's about once you know especially that your parents are supporting you and are behind you there should mm -hmm. not be anything else that should be stopping you no that that's definitely that's definitely the case that's, that's definitely the case all right we're gonna take a five minute break and we'll come back one Click Supplies is offering an easy grocery and supplies online shopping website for Zimbabweans in the diaspora. One Click Supplies makes supporting your families easy, putting a smile on their faces. Welcome back to the Tandy Jacobs show. Um, we are now in our third segment and Ashley Kupaza has been one a very interesting guest I've had on today. <laughs> um, we've talked quite a bit actually about different things with regards to what um, what you went through mm -hmm. and about barrel resolutions. Yeah, yeah. But earlier on, you said that you had your parents' support a hundred percent when you decided to go into the circular to play in the circular world, not to yeah. go into the circular world. Yeah, I think but it's a good good thing that we, yeah. we make that distinction. <laughs> um, when you decided to go and play in the circular world as well for different artists. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is, what if your parents did not support your vision? Mm -hmm. What if your parents 
did not support what you wanted to do okay what would you have done then because this is something that um especially young young boys mm -hmm. who are christian and maybe they want to do something else but then their parents are not in support of what they're doing mm -hmm. not even just young boys young children of young course. girls and boys yeah so what would you have done i think you made mention something very key before i even answer that question you said uh circular world yeah first of all there's no circular world there's no gospel world uh i think that's the stigma starts from when we section them you understand mm -hmm. of course gospel music and uh, circular music is very different yeah but when we say a world it means like we, we, Two yeah it, we, we're sort of like alienating the the whole environment and for for, for myself had my parents not supported me i guess uh, i'm a believer first of all um and that's something that never changed something that has not changed regardless of who i was playing for i've always been a firm believer i've accepted jesus christ as my lord and personal savior okay. so that is um that is ultimately what would have um what, what would have come back to and i think I, I read an autobiography somewhere i was watching a video where davido was talking about like initially when he started his music thing his parents didn't support him mm -hmm. but then we look at davido right now you know filling up o2 arena and things like mm -hmm. that and now he's yeah. exactly now he's managed to bring his parents on board and just basically turn around and say because i think um in, in certain in certain places your parents have to be able to see the vision that you see yeah uh and the only way that they can s see that is by you basically going out going out and pioneering through that and just basically just going through the furnace and making making sure that they can identify and be able to see where you're trying to go with things because i'm looking at it from an angle that um parents who have not been raised here were mm -hmm. not born and bred here and coming here but also even the children who are still in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. or whichever country they may be in mm -hmm. and them seeing and witnessing that um, the child is now going a different direction from what they anticipated for what they had hoped for of course uh, what they'd vision for what they had said to the child when it was <laughs> baby but I suppose this is where being born to differ comes all comes in because each and every person was born to be different. Yeah. Each and every person was born to be an individual. We don't... Yes, Tandy Jacobs was born to differ. Exactly. Yeah. Because we cannot go... Just because somebody has this in mind for you does not mean that is the direction that you have to go. Yeah, so uh, I, like, I like the fact that you've mentioned the born to differ. I've, I've always been... Uh, I would like to call myself a catalyst in, a, in an environment that you put me in. Mm. I'm not somebody that... Uh, basically just accepts change you understand mm. i instill change around me okay. you understand so i'm born to, to be different already i was i always knew i was a bit peculiar in terms of like how i approached life so you so, didn't want to be just another ordinary i didn't want to be that. son exactly i just don't want to be another number you and understand? then you take over the pastor's church yes your so, father's church and then now we're like pastor ashley Kupanza. so the thing is like everyone was like no you're going to be taking over the church so you need to extend a certain way and i was like to be honest maybe that's not what i believe god has called me to do mm. do you understand maybe i want to go take my life in a different direction and that doesn't necessarily mean um i think my biggest um biggest challenge is uh, we face as young young children or young adults um, growing up in a different culture and different environment and basically our parents trying to basically hone in everything that they brought up uh, they were brought up getting taught is sometimes you actually lose your your child in the in trying to force in them trying to do yeah, yeah you understand yeah. so you drift apart I think you need to be able to build a relationship with your child, first of all. Understand where they're trying to come from. Understand where they're trying to get to, you understand? Then be able to hone in and turn around and say, my son, I've understood that you're looking to get there. But before we get there, can I explain, you know, where these roads lead to and my experiences, you know, it becomes a conversation. A conversation. Uh, so I think the dictatorship thing doesn't really... It's, uh, that, I think uh, back back home, that dictatorship approach might have worked, but now things have a bit changed. Things have changed. Yeah. Change. so what would you say mm -hmm. um to any young adults when did bar river solutions originally start i would say four years ago when my daughter was born ago. yeah um but then you had already started playing yeah of course of course that. of course so in as so in as much as the brand started then yeah but the talent and the gift and the things that you were doing started yeah. well before that of course so would you say how many years ago was that well how many years have i been playing like uh i would say 
professionally getting paid for it, I would say just over 10 years. Over 10 years. So yeah. you were 28, so... Yeah, I would say around about... I would say when I started, started around about 17, 18. About 17, 18. So, okay, where I'm coming to is what then would you say to any young person out there? Okay. So, um, to be honest, I, I, I'm, I'm a young, I'm a sort of like a passionate believer in terms of young people empowerment. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of like speaking to any young person out there, if you definitely believe in what you're doing and you feel like this is what you're called to do, I would definitely say go out and basically be the best that you can be in that environment and own that environment. Be prepared and take every opportunity that comes your way and basically make sure that you are the best person in that environment, be it music, be it like uh, public speaking, be it poetry, doesn't really matter what it is. Just basically make sure that this, when we, we when people speak about that specific subject, they they identify your name with greatness. So to be honest, it's like a spirit of excellence, essentially. Wow, wow, that's really great. And especially the fact that you were 18 when you initially started, because at 18, People are doing crazy things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At 18, you've gone to university. Yeah. The world is your oyster. You yeah. know, isn't it? So it's um, you know, it's very interesting and it's very encouraging. And especially being able to now ten years later, you are making money out of what it of is course, that you of gave course, birth to. Of course. And now you were able to empower and encourage other young people yeah. to do what they believe in, mm. to identify their uniqueness mm. and to be who they want to be. Mm. So what is the future for Bar of a Solution? So yeah, that's a, that's a good question that you've actually mentioned. So um, pre prehistorically, Bar of a Solutions was a, a, a music uh, affiliated company. Yeah. Everything that we done was uh, in relation to to music or entertainment or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So we actually branched off. Uh, I'd say back in the last year, because um, by profession I'm an IT recruiter. So um, I wanted to basically run something that was mine. You understand? So I started uh, basically um, my own IT recruitment company, basically. So we have uh, Bioware Solutions. We do IT recruitment as well. Okay. So, yeah. So Bioware Solutions, the future, um, it's, it's a solutions company, definitely. <laughs> so you've got the IT side on one arm. You've got the music and entertainment and ev events and everything else. So uh, the, the, the future definitely looks, um, look ex looks exciting for us. Okay, and you've got big and great plans for it. Definitely, definitely. There's a lot of um, things that we're doing on the music side, um, a lot of artists that we're working with, and uh, also on the IT side, there's a lot of things that we, we, we're working on in, in the background, essentially. Fantastic. I think one of the days on one of my episodes, I'm going to have you here either sing, dance Borodell, <laughs> And have your keyboard with you, which costs three thousand pounds, <laughs> and play on set. But it's been an absolutely pleasure having you here today, and um, look forward to seeing you again another time. Thank you very much, Sandy. Thank you for having me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been absolutely wonderful having Ashley here on the show today. He's been telling us and encouraging us about how him at a young age has been able to change and transform his life and get himself involved in so many uh, gifts and talents and use them to his advantage. My message and my encouragement to you is own who you are. You are different. You were born to be different. You are original and you are going to be unique. Thank you so much. Take care. See you soon.